Great Lakes Prepping here. There's a lot of ways to make a good beef barley soup. And in this edition of the Sunday Soup Series, I'm gonna show you how to make my personal favorite. I'll mention that this soup is a little more complex than a lot of my other soup recipes. It's not difficult, but there are a few extra steps. And this is a soup you pretty much have to start the day before you wanna eat it. But I promise it's worth the wait and you just might consider this the best tasting beef soup you've ever had. A lot of beef barley soup recipes call for a tomato based broth, but I happen to think there are already plenty of other soups with a tomato -y broth and this doesn't need to be one of them. What I'm looking for in a beef barley soup is a bold, savory, beefy broth and diluting those flavors with tomato is about as tragic as putting ketchup on a steak, especially considering that so much of our flavor in this soup is coming from succulent beef short ribs. As always, let's get started by taking a look at our ingredients. From left to right, more or less, we have white onion, diced carrot, minced garlic, beef broth, diced parsnip, chopped celery, red wine, olive oil, black pepper, bay leaf, salt, dried thyme, barley, and perhaps the most delicious and tender cut of meat with which to make a soup, beef short ribs. This soup starts by seasoning and searing three short ribs. These aren't especially huge short ribs, so you could go with just two if yours are quite large. Rub the ribs with a generous amount of coarse salt, and then get about two tablespoons of olive oil heated up in a medium-sized stock pot. We're going to sear each side of these ribs for about two minutes on medium-high heat. Don't move the meat around in the pan once it's sitting. Just leave it alone and let it sear until it's time to turn them to another side. Once all six sides have been nicely seared, remove them from the pot and set aside. Now for some vegetables. Add another small splash of olive oil and add in two cups of onion, two third cups carrots, two third cups parsnips, and two third cups celery. A quick note, if you don't want to bother with parsnips, just go with one cup of carrots and one cup of celery instead. But why not give them a try? Parsnips taste kind of like carrot, but more earthy and sweet. Cook the vegetables until the onions begin to turn translucent. Add in four cloves of minced garlic and cook a couple more minutes. Now it's time to deglaze. Pour in one half cup of red wine and scrape loose any brown bits off the bottom of the pot with a wooden spoon. Use whichever type of red wine you prefer for cooking. I happen to like using Merlot for cooking, Use whatever you want, but a drier wine is probably best. Now for the broth and spices. Add two quarts of beef broth. That's equivalent to eight cups or 64 fluid ounces. Next, one half teaspoon salt, one half teaspoon black pepper, one half teaspoon dry thyme, and one bay leaf. Stir everything well and then set the short ribs back into the pot, submerging them in the liquid. Let everything come up to a simmer and then turn the heat to very low. Now the soup needs to cook on a low simmer for four hours. Give it a quick stir every once in a while. After four hours, turn off the heat and let the pot sit for a while until it can be safely placed into the refrigerator. Because beef short ribs are so fatty, we need to remove a bunch of it from the soup. If you skip this step, you will end up with a soup that is far too greasy. Refrigerating the entire pot overnight will cause a substantial amount of the fat to rise to the top and solidify, allowing for relatively easy removal. The next day, do your best to skim off the layer of fat with a spoon. Try to get any obvious chunks of this white fat out of the soup. Even after this step, this soup is still on the fatty side, so definitely don't worry that you might be removing too much of the fat and therefore flavor. Once the fat is skimmed off as much as possible, remove the short ribs from the pot once again. Take extra care to fish out the bone from each rib because they will have surely fallen away from the meat. Now you can just discard the bones. You just don't want them in the pot anymore. Also remove and discard the bay leaf. Now return the pot to the stove and turn it on medium heat. The next step is to add the barley. There are two things I need to mention about the barley. First, just use ordinary pearled barley. Stay away from any product called instant barley or quick barley. That is not what you want for soup. I've noticed that some grocery stores only seem to sell this weird instant barley, but don't bother with it. It would be like dumping instant oatmeal into your pot, and it's going to ruin your soup. Second, I recommend putting in the barley on the same day you intend to serve the soup. If you're planning to freeze the soup or keep it in the fridge for a few days before serving, add that barley in at the time you're heating it up to eat. 
Similar to noodles, they will end up getting bloated and mushy if left soaking in the liquid for that long. So, add in one third of a cup of ordinary pearled barley. Once the pot comes to a low simmer, set a timer for 45 minutes. In the meantime, roughly chop up the short ribs on a cutting board. They will be so tender it'll take hardly any effort at all to chop them up. Discard any obvious large hunks of fat, then stir the chopped up meat back into the soup. After the 45 minutes of simmering, it's ready to serve. Because it takes practically a day and a half to make, I don't cook this particular soup incredibly often. The somewhat pricey short ribs also contribute to this recipe being more of a special treat than a regular meal. So even if you only ever make it once, definitely give it a try. But fair warning, it may ruin every other beef barley soup for you, especially ones that are besmirched with tomatoey broth. And since Lena told me I'd be sleeping on the couch tonight if I didn't give her a taste of this short rib she's been smelling for the last two days, I had little choice but to share. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and stay up to date with all our latest videos. And if you make this soup, post it on Facebook and tag Great Lakes Prepping. Lastly, I'll be posting the full printable recipe on our blog at greatlakesprepping.com. Thanks for watching and for all of your continued support. And until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.